What's good, uh, internet? My name is Attack Slug. Welcome back to WWE 2K15 in 2021 on the PS5. I have myself an NXT title match. Put myself on the Neville level, if you will. The bastard. Let's go fight Neville. Build him up. Get out of here. Go. Goodbye. This match for the NXT title is critical. For your career, winning it will solidify you as a force in the WWE. Don't let an opportunity like this slip away. It is time, folks, for my first title opportunity against the current NXT champion. Get on the Neville level. It is Adrian Neville. I would forgotten that when he started, he had two names. I totally forgot he had two names and now... He's just a bastard. And I welcome you to a fine Thursday on the show, on the program. There is some NXT and AEW to discuss today. But before that, we have a very sad rest in peace to Jim Crockett. If you are any bit aware of wrestling history, the name Jim Crockett should certainly mean something to you. Uh, and yeah, rest in peace at 76. So... Let's take on that boy, Neville. And man, he got lucky to not get put in that Mighty Mouse gimmick. Good God. Vince is wild for that one. So, the NXT Championship on the line. My overall is a 56. Can I get the job done? That's a really good question. Because I lost to Bo Dallas. So, you know. Okay, Neville. Let's get on your level and see if we can't win that title. Because what happens if I don't? What happens if I can't put away Neville? I couldn't beat Bodalis, so what happens? I don't know. Because when I fought with Ebenezer, I won these matches. Just straight up won them. So, not sure how it works if I don't win them. Anyhow, AEW was a scattershot show last night. All kinds of things happening. On the road to revolution this Sunday, I chose the thing. I did the thing, yeah. And man, there's a lot to get into here. So they began with the Shaq and Cody, Jay Cargill, Red Velvet, mixed tag team competition. And wow, a lot more than you would have thought from somebody on the caliber and level and age of Shaq. Like, he was into it, which is great. And man, that would have voted a lot better for, say, a match 10 years ago with, with Big Show. But, you know, we're here in 2021 on TNT with Big Diesel here and fighting with Cody. And so, yeah, they won that match. Shaq and Jay Cargill won that match, but Shaq did not get that pinfall. Shaq went through two tables at the same time. So, big props to Big Shaq doing that. Because most guys who come in aren't going to go through a table spot at that age and that weight and size uh, in their only ever, like... Alright, he was in that battle royal. But still, going through two tables for Shaq was, wow. Very impressed. Very impressed. But that led to an ambulance uh, spot there where they put him in the ambulance. And that led to Shaq disappearing. Shaq pulling a Kazam. And he was just gone. Like, they put him in the ambulance, and then he disappeared. What? Huh? Now, of course, the one thing I did predict was, hey, we're going to see Shaq and Big Show. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Paul White. And none of that, that was not happening at all. And even when he vanished, I was like, all right, he's going to vanish. And then when he, when he reappears, it's going to be with... But no, that was not the case at all. So, unfortunate. But perhaps at some point in the future, you never know. Now that they've certainly es established that Shaq can do business uh, and all that stuff. But yeah, so big push there. I think the whole point there was the big push for one Jade Cargill getting that pin on Red Velvet. And Red Velvet looking very very impressive with that top rope moonsault stuff was uh, pretty good. I can dig it. I can dig it. So uh, from that, we went to a death triangle having a squash match. Not worth just Not worth discussing here. We had the Inner Circle press conference with names like Conrad Thompson and Eric Bischoff. 
and that ended with a Young Bucks brawl and more table spots. So the AEW tables budget for this show must have been pretty high. They're breaking them left and right. And that was, you know, pretty cool. So, uh, a lot of surprising things on this show that was like, wait. And what I mean by that is names. If you told somebody a year ago, names you would see on one episode of AEW include Shaq, J.J. Dillon, and Onita. All on the same program, you go, huh? What kind of fantasy booking fever dream would that even be for anybody? But yes, they had a barbed wire deathmatch video package hyping up Omega and Mox for this Sunday. And actually had footage of Onita and FMW from Japan. That's wild. Like, having him put over the match is wild in 2021. Uh, like, seeing Onita on TV, on cable TV, in America, in 2021, is some wild business, I'm gonna say. And it's like, alright, if you're a casual fan who tuned in for Shaq, you're like, who's the Japanese guy, right? But, if you know, you know. Um, so, kudos on getting that done. That's pretty freaking cool. So, dragging the Neville. Is this the Neville level? Can one slug sploder put him away? It did. It took two for Hondero. But Neville went down and we have a new NXT a champion. In a pretty uh, straightforward got that job done type matchup. But yes, J.J. Dillon also in the building to accompany Tully and FTR. So, very much a 4 4 4 4 horseman type business. But the Masked Nerd is your new NXT a champion. So, shocking the world is a tax slug. And new. There it is. New champ. The champ is here. Four and a half stars. Instant classic. More VC. More SP. Shut up, Bill DeMott. Thank you, Mr. William Regal. Congratulations! Your first big step to being a legit WWE superstar. Well, 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 I see a certain viper there in the timeline. Imagine that. Now that you are NXT champion, gotta defend that title. Every week this month. A fighting champion indeed. Ray Rich gets a shot but does not get an entrance. I'm sorry. So it was indeed FTR and Tully with JJ in Tully's first in-ring match in 32 years, something like that, versus Jurassic Express. And guess what? The heels win that match because, oh, we had Sean Spears. He's back. After leaving, he is now officially back, and they cut to a shot of Arn Anderson throwing up the four horsemen in the distance. So that was like, okay, all right. And from one bit of old WCW to another, went to Shivani with Paul White making his big uh, debut here in a interview thing. And man, look, Paul White, big show. If you're gonna be here, I understand you wanna push your new AW t-shirt. I get it, but big show in a t-shirt and jeans looks terrible, I'm sorry. Either put him in a suit or put him in his ring gear. One of the two, he looked super awkward there. So, that was that. But, bigger news though. That he is doing his due diligence as a announcer now. Or as a, as a commentator. And saying he has a big scoop. There will be a Hall of Fame worthy level signing happening this Sunday at Revolution. So, obviously, the internet going wild with speculation. Like, absolutely wild on who's it going to be. Now, of course, that could mean a lot of things, right? I think everyone is immediately going to assume it's going to be a, a actual in-ring competitor. But it don't need to be. It could be a Hall of Fame-worthy announcer. It could be a Hall of Fame-worthy referee. Like, there's a lot of th things that are Hall of Fame-worthy. I wouldn't immediately jump to the conclusion that, that it's going to be a, a wrestler. It could be a manager, right? We don't know. But... The first thing he said was 
It's not going to be who you think it is. And when you say AEW signing a Hall of Fame worthy person, the first thing that I think would be CM Punk. So I'm going to assume it's not CM Punk. But hey, it could be CM Punk. That could be a swerve. Now, there was some confusion here in that the sixth man in that AEW Face of Re Revolution ladder match has not been announced yet. We don't know who is the sixth man, right? And some folks thought that Big Show's thing was going to be the same thing as the sixth man. But I think it's two different things there. Because I think the sixth man could very easily be could very easily be Sammy in that la ladder match. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. But hey, we'll see. So yeah, it was such a mean gene WCW call the hotline type thing that, yeah. Anyhow, the finals to see who would fight Hikaru Shida this weekend at Revolution was indeed Nyla Rose and Ryo Mizunami. And of course, Mizunami won this match because why would you fly out somebody from Japan to work a one match thing and then lose? So that one, I had an, an assumption that whoever was in the finals from the Japan side was going to be the winner there to fight Cheetah. Because having them there for one match makes no sense at all. Now, there was some more Sting, Team Taz, Darby Allen stuff. Sure, fine. Uh, Max Caster beat 10 with the help of Jack Evans, paid off by Big Money Matt Hardy, to advance into that AEW ladder match happening as the face of Revolution, right? And I thought it was funny, but very much a wrestling thing for Matt Hardy's envelope with the money he handed to, to Evans to actually have the number on the envelope of how much money it was. Like, who does that? That is such a comically ridiculous wrestling trope that the fans have to know how much was in that envelope. Like, you can't let them just speculate and assume it's a lot of money. No, it has to say the amount of money on the envelope. That's really funny. So, Slug Sploder attacks Slug defending this title. And the main event was indeed Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn versus John Silver and Hangman. And there you go. Defended. Defended. And of course, Silver and Paige win that match. But then everybody who's in that la who's in that tag team battle royal on Sunday comes out. And man, it's a little bit weird to see like 30, 40 guys in a ring during a pandemic. But, you know, these things happen. And that was the end of the show. They had, they had an extra hour there after that. I went to bed. But the extra hour was for your kind of countdown show. And I'm not. I'm good. But big shout outs to the opening of that countdown show. Featuring music from my boy Mega Ran. Uh, awesome stuff there. Love to see it. Three more to go. I suppose we'll do one more so I can sit here and discuss NXT. Tommy Wall. Let's go. NXT had Oni and Danny in a non-title versus Champa and Thatcher because one of the guys in MSK, I guess, hurt his hand or something due to the Imperium attack. And Oni and Danny Burch win this match because of, I guess, interference here from Imperium. And Thatcher was the one who got pinned and that whole thing was a deal. Now... We had more Roddy Strong, Finn Balor brawling uh, to find out what's going on with Adam Cole and his whole, you know, Adam Cole beardness. But they announced next week, I guess Balor announced next week, it's going to be NXT title on the line, Balor and Adam Cole. Also, the NXT women's title, Io Shirai and Tony Storm is happening next week. Stacking that show. Also, a huge announcement from William Regal. That will change the course of NXT or something like that, right? And so, yeah, they're stacking the deck on their NXT show next week. There were ongoing vignettes here with The Way in therapy because of Dexter Loomis. And that, I guess, accomplished something. I don't know. It was kind of funny, but kind of like, all right. They like doing that with those guys and having these, like, over the course of the evening, having several of those. But anyhow, Cameron Grimes... Uh, is continuing to try to emulate Ted DiBiase, and it is amazing. Damn you, Ted DiBiase, because it's not working. Everything that DiBiase did back in the 80s for him is not working in the modern day for Cameron Grimes. That's pretty good, right? But he got booked against Bronson Reed. Now, 
Um, we had Ember beating Aaliyah. All right. All right. The Naya and Shayna versus Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez matchup ended with, well, first of all, it was all heels. It was oops, all heels, which by default made Dakota and Raquel faces in this matchup, which is why you generally don't book matches that are all heels. Generally. Because uh, who do you cheer for? Got it. Got to be somebody. But what happened here at the end was a ref bump, and then, shockingly, Adam Pierce, who does not go here, came out and sent out another official who called the match, and it, Raquel was legal, but he called the tap out from Kai. And so it was a shenanigans finish on that to keep both teams looking strong, but still champions Nia and Shayna. So that's going to lead to, I guess, something with Adam Cole... With Adam Pierce, I'm sorry, Adam Pierce and uh, Regal, man, I don't know. I l legit do not know. It's interesting. Tell me, Wall fighting back. Now we also had our NXT in-ring promo from LA Knight, and then out comes Bronson Reed and Cameron Grimes for a match. But LA Knight interferes here with the hat, and Cameron Grimes wins the match. I guess LA Knight's first feud is going to be. Big ol' Bronson Reed. Sure. Why not? There was a brief Ever-Rise Fondango, Brizongo, Fantasma thing here to kind of reestablish the dominance after that whole thing last week with all of Fantasma getting beat up by Karrion Cross. It was not on the show this evening. And then your main event was Balor and Roddy Strong. Balor wins, but Adam Cole is watching. So, you know, that happened. So, all in all... An all right show from NXT, obviously obviously building towards a big show next week, no pun intended. And then, I don't know, is Regal's announcement the whole moving to Tuesdays? Is that going to change the landscape for NXT? It could. It certainly could. Tommy Wall, get yourself dead center and get a pinfall. Pinfall on the wall. Brother, what? Tommy, what? You've got to be joking me. I was done. I was done. Why am I not done? Tommy Wall, tell me why. Big splash. Pin on the splash. I don't have that skill yet. I hate you, Tommy Wall. Don't make me with another slug exploder. I can't believe he's making me do a charge finish on um, big old Tommy here, but a slug exploder nonetheless. And uh, dragging to the center, dragging to the center to make sure no rope break shenanigans. We're done here. And still, you're NXT champion. Two down and two to go, which means two for tomorrow. I am your host, Attack Slug. More videos on this channel. I'll see you next time, and I'm out.